there. But can I just say... Can I ask you about the funding model? Can I ask you about the funding model? You touched on it earlier, I believe. We know what the Future Media Commission came out for. They came out in favour of what I think you're arguing for tonight, a direct... Exchequer funding. No, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm not necessarily arguing that. No, I'm saying that the future of RT is not as it's set out in the Broadcasting Act 2009. It has to be downsized. It has to move to what I call a publisher model, whereby they actually commission programmes, they decide to pay for them independently, and it, it, it's structured. There are talks about a tech tax, you know, and other things which would be more politically uh, pleasing. But let's be clear, this non-payment to the licence I was saying RT will lose, if, say if everyone paid the licence fee, you know, as is, they would lose 30 million next year and 50 million the year after. That is the way it's going. And RT in their annual report said last week the cost of non-payment is 21 million. That's based on, the licence fee is 196 million. 10%, you know, that's, they've got their figures wrong. Their hole is somewhere around a black hole of 60 million, in addition to the pressures that were there on advertising and audience fragmenting. In terms of the funding model, though, you're saying there, we turn, no, we what's turn into... What's going to happen is the government are going to do... They don't think beyond the next election. They write a cheque just to get it through the next election. And it'll be a sticking plaster solution and all of the problems inside RT will not be addressed. Ellen, how should RT be funded into the future? I think that you're in a difficult situation now where every option is going to be an unpopular one because of the context with what we found ourselves in. Uh, when the report came out last year, I think Catherine Martin went against the recommendation for exchequer funding. I'm not sure if that's changed in the current climate. There have been reports in the media about a household charge. That was proposed in 2015 and politicians rightly backed away from it because they were so... gone back as far as 2012. Yeah, they were traumatised by... Was, was telling us yeah. this was definitely coming yeah. in and he couldn't get it over the line at that well, point. Well, at that time, obviously they were traumatised by by water charges, so they backed away from it as fast as they possibly could. I don't know why in the current climate you would try to bring in anything that could be in any way compared to water charges, anything that's a sort of household charge. When you think of water charges, there was a call to action and there was an actual campaign. The rates of people who are not complying now, it's not an organised campaign. People are that annoyed enough that they're deciding on their own off the back of the payments controversy not to in pay. In some numbers. In some numbers, on top of the, the kind of standard non-compliance that we've always had, which has always been higher than other European countries. Are the government right to be afraid of a water charge style revolt? Yes, absolutely. I think even closer than that, the government should be afraid about this interim funding that's going to be required. Like, you can hear tonight how annoyed the public still are over the story. I think covering it in a newspaper, I am astounded at the, the level of interest that still endures in this story. And I think that if people perceive that the government is bailing RTE out and kind of saving it from its troubles, I wouldn't want to be the politician signing that cheque. And I'd say there's probably not a lot of joy in Marion Street about it. Let's go to Marion Street representative now. Uh, RTE got exchequer funding last year. They're going to get some exchequer funding this year. They've asked for money. They're not going to get as much as they've, I, they've asked for, uh, just, to, just to say that. And that's going to be decided in the budget. So there is going to be a certain amount of short-term funding uh, to help them fill in their, their gap. But at the same time, we need to fix the long-term problem as well, which is how is RTE how is RTE going to be funded for their public, se their public sector mandate? And just to say, sorry, their public service mandate. And just to say that, they, that there is consensus in government that public service broadcasting is worth having, that RTE is, is, worth, uh, is worth keeping, and that we're not going to allow uh, you know, RTE to be replaced by a purely independent company or by some kind of Fox News well, type of clear, operation. The government have been very generous to RTE. One of the things they did was the complaint to the cost of the orchestra. That has now been shunted into the National Concert Hall. They got a 50 billion bailout for COVID. Like, they have received a lot of support already. Um, Richard Bruton wrote that cheque. 50 I, billion. A million. Right. Million. Minister, can I ask you, that, that, uh, the spectre of a water charge style revolt, uh, political, a political revolt uh, in relation to uh, a new broadcast household uh, charge? Yeah, I don't think there's any comparison. Does I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean people never paid for, for water before, and I think there was an idea of, and uh, now I have to pay for something I never paid for before, it's not right. We've had, we've had public funding, we've had a, a, a licence fee for, for decades, and people understand the idea that you pay money and you get public sector broadcasting. So, I mean, there's, there's, there is a, there's an understanding of that, right? So I don't, I don't think that, I don't think that those things are, are comparable So this in isn't 
And this isn't something that is keeping Catherine Martin awake at night, you're saying? I'm sure Catherine Martin is completely focused on this, but what she's waiting for is for RTE to come back with a clear programme, with a clear um, plan for how they are going to reform the, the company root and branch, which everybody expects, how the, and how they're going, um, they going to make themselves financially sustainable. So she's waiting to see that um, before there's any response on how the funding is going to work. That will okay. be a slimmed down service by RT. I think Ivan is right that whatever emerges from this, and new Director General has a mandate to do whatever he wants to do now, I think, it will be less than is there at the present because and the funding will mean? be less. 2, 2FM, Lyric, TG Cahar, it like depends. which is public service? Yeah, I know. I mean, they have to define what is public service and what is commercial because there's been a fudge between the two and that's been there forever and it has now emerged how unhealthy that is. Well, so I think there will be a slim down RTE in years to come. No okay, question well, about it. You know, I want to go back to our audience on this because we need to know what do people want from RTE? What do people think public service broadcasting should be? Y yourself. Katie, um, first of all, I think the focus of this programme is all wrong. <clears throat> I think RTE should be focusing on rebuilding trust because that's what's bro broken. And also this um, license fee model is dated, it's out of date. You know, most people um, paid it, but a, a huge amount of people also didn't pay it. And what's happening now is you have a protest. People are using it as a protest against Everything that went on in RTE, you know, the outrageous payments to what they called the talent, you know, I mean, that's just crazy. And, and it's, not, it's unsustainable. Uh, but I do think that what we need is we need some kind of a model that will allow RTE to vacate the commercial uh, end of the business. I know this man says it can't survive without that, but I think it, it needs to be publicly funded to uh, provide a, a public broadcasting service. It, needed, it needs to be slimmed down and it needs uh, Kevin Barkhurst to show us what his strategy is going to be, which is going to be a report, I think, published in October. So let's see what he produces. Yes.